And we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. My bad for having that longer than normal break. Cardi just dropped, and I absolutely needed to see what he just dropped. But regardless, we are going to go ahead into the third segment and talk about um, not Cardi dropping a new song, but the NBA games that ended up happening the previous yesterday, as well as the, some of the games that I didn't cover yesterday that I wanted to cover but couldn't. So, first game on the list, I already talked about the Lakers and Bucks. Don't need to really bring that up. First game I'm going to talk about is the Warriors going up against the Miami Heat. So, this was another game where Curry did not play well whatsoever. Klay Thompson was back in the starting lineup, so he's back in the rotation for the starting lineup. Ended the game with 28 points on 11 of 20 from the field, 6 of 14 from 3. Again, this shooting is exactly what got him on the bench in the first place. And... It hasn't really gotten much better, and I'm very worried about um, how the Warriors are going to end up playing in the in the play-in. Although, as a LeBron fan, I really hope they continue to play this bad because that would just mean another win against Curry for LeBron on an even playing field. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Curry literally cannot beat LeBron on an even playing field. He just, he can't. It's that, like, he cannot. It is that simple. He cannot. 2015, the, the Cavs, they they played the Warriors in the finals. Steph Curry, yes, he played well. Kyrie was injured. Kevin Love was injured. So that's not an even playing field. LeBron going against Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala. That's not an even playing field. 2017, 2018, also not an even playing field because they had Kevin Durant on the roster. That is an OP lineup. No one in the history of this sport is beating that team. No team ever assembled in the history of the sport is beating that team. And 2016, he lost. Obviously, he lost to a fully healthy LeBron team. And then, let's see, what other years? Because they played in a lot of play-in games. Now, the last year in the play-in, they ended up blowing the game completely. I also remember, well, actually, no, last year in the playoffs, they ended up blowing the series completely because Mr. Steph Curry wasn't so clutch, and LeBron James was just better than him. And what else? Let me think. Ooh, in the play-in, when um, LeBron ended up hitting that game-winning three over Steph Curry's head. It's like every single time LeBron has proven time and time again that he is better than Steph, but people still want to say this is the Steph Curry era and stuff like that. Like, no, get that out of here. LeBron is better than him, and Steph Curry will never be better than LeBron no matter how badly you want him to be. But I digress, and this is just more proof of this. this he scored 17 points in this game, and he's had, he's had multiple games where he's scored less than 10 points. If LeBron were to score less than 10 points in any game now, he would be crucified. Abs you would be, the media would not, would not let him live it down until he drops 50 the next day. And that's a huge difference of pressure from LeBron's standpoint to Steph Curry's standpoint. It just shows you how much better he is. Every single time, yes, every single time I talk about Steph, I'm going to have to talk about LeBron because LeBron is better than him, and I'm going to keep doing that. And this, back with the Warriors, now, Klay Thompson, yes, they, they did end up winning, sure, but, like, Klay Thompson has to shoot a lot better. Like, he can't go out like that. I mean, 28 points is still not bad, but 6 of 14 from the three-point line, that's going to hurt them going into the going deeper into the playoffs if they end up making the playoffs. Now, Jimmy Butler, he also didn't end up playing this game, which explains why the score was so low for the Miami Heat. And let's just look at the box scores just to see. Yeah, Bam ended up leading the team in scoring 10 for 21, 24 points. Let's see. Terry Rozier ended the game with 15 points, 7 of 18 from the field. Jamie Jacquees Jr. ended the game with 12 points, and Haywood Highsmith ended the game with 15 points, 6 of 7 from the field. So, obviously, the rest of the team did not really play as well compared to Golden State, and Golden State didn't really play that well either, but it was good enough to get them to be able to get a bunch of wins, and enough win. well, 
it was good enough for them to be able to score the ball enough and get enough wins so that that way they can stay afloat and the Houston Rockets don't just sneak up on them and steal that spot. And that's honestly the biggest fear that the Warriors should have right now. I know Draymond said he wasn't worried about Houston, but I really feel that quote is going to bite him. Like, I think that, I think Houston, they do have a very legitimate shot of making the play-in tournament and stealing the Golden State Warriors spot, which I'm not sure is a matchup that the Lakers would want to have. I don't know if they would want, honestly, they probably would because I see Dylan Brooks talking so much trash to LeBron and that would just ignite LeBron and LeBron would immediately just cook him for 40 points. I can totally see that happening right now, but I digress. More on the games that went on last night. The Mavericks ended up beating the Kings 132 to 96. So, so far, this Mavericks team has been playing a lot better recently. They also, they play the Kings yet again on Friday. But this win, very dominant win coming in from the, um, from the Dallas Mavericks. A win that they desperately needed. Luka ended the game with 28 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. Unfortunately, though, while Luka might be the best player in the NBA right now, he's not going to win the MVP because Jokic is going to end up winning the MVP with the numbers that he drops and the triple-doubles that he averages and the fact that the that right now, if I look at the conference standings, let me just go right ahead, the Nuggets have the number one seed, and that's really going to be the ultimate deciding factor. Like, if... If the Mavs were maybe fourth, I could probably see it. But still, it's the fact that this man, Jokic, is doing what he's doing while leading his team to a winning record. Like, that is just un- that is unbelievable coming in from Jokic. And just looking at the rest of the box scores, Kyrie ended the game with 24 points, 8 assists, and... They all shot relatively well, both Kyrie and Luka Doncic. 10 of 18 from... from Luka and 10 of 19 from Kyrie. Now, Gafford ended the game 5 of 7, 10 points. PJ Washington ended the game with 14 points, 5 of 11 from the field. And Tim Hardaway Jr. ended the game with 22 points. So, obviously, this team, like, they're a unit and they can make noise in the playoffs. I think if they go up against the Suns, they are easily going to beat them. Now, on the Kings side, however, Keegan Murray, 17 points. De'Aaron Fox, 18 points. Sabonis, still keeping his double-double streak alive, 12 points and 11 rebounds, and one off of a triple-double. And that's basically it in terms of scoring for um, the Kings, because the rest of the players, they did not score that well, and they did not score that efficiently either. So the efficiency is what ended up is what caused them to tank and lose this game. Next game on the list is the Thunder going up against the Pelicans. Now, the Thunder, they ended up winning 119 to 112. So, very impressive game coming in from the Thunder right now. 24 points. Shy, this is the first time I've seen Shy Gilgis get less than 31 points. So, at least when I've been doing these reviews. 24 points, 8 assists, and 5 rebounds. Jalen Williams ended the game with 26 points and 5 assists. Chet Holmgren ended the game with 16 points and 9 rebounds. The Chet Holmgren Rookie of the Year talk is quiet. No one thinks he's Rookie of the Year anymore because Victor Wembenyama is clear-cut the best rookie ever. I knew it coming into the, the draft. I knew he was going to be the best. There were so many people that wanted to be different and be like, oh my god, Scoot is so good, and Chet is just as good, and he's literally just as tall. No, he's not. No, he is not, and neither of those players are going to be better than Wemby. Even, like, the Thompson brothers, like, a lot of people were saying that they were they could be better than him. No! No. No one is going to be better than a seven foot four player that can dribble like a guard. That is just unheard of, and that's something that's never going to happen. Ever again. Unless his brother just decides to come in and terrorize the league, too. Yes, Victor has a brother. It's like, oh my god, there's two of them. Like, one alien isn't enough. But regardless, Josh... Ooh, I didn't, I'm, never mind, I'm not even going to say that man's name because I do not like what he does outside of the court. 
and but everyone else they really shot they shot rather well and they shot very efficient now on the pelican side cj ended the game with 23 points six rebounds five assists with 41 minutes played zion ended the game 29 points 10 assists as well and that again that was basically it in terms of scoring for these teams yeah like it's it's gone it's been really one-sided with the scoring so far it's really only been like one player except for the lakers which was um every, uh, multiple people scoring but the bucks they had only one key player scoring now the the warriors they only really had one key player scoring and now with this game it's ooh well would you look at that i could finally use this How do you guys like that? So, basically, I just got an update from Woj saying that Mitchell Robinson is expected to be active and available to play for the Knicks going up against the Raptors. Now, this is huge coming in from the Knicks because Mitchell Robinson is one of the better rim protectors in this league. Well, a good rim protector. I wouldn't say he's one of the best. He's a good rim protector, and he's a very efficient scorer, like... The reason why I say this is because he operates the pick and roll rather well. Have, pairing him up with Jalen Brunson is going to work wonders for this Knicks team. And now we're starting to see a lot of these Knicks players end up getting healthy coming towards the playoff time, which is what it, which is what they need. Right now they're fourth, last I checked, they are fourth in the in the Eastern Conference. And the fact that they're fourth without having Julius Randle in the on the roster is very very impressive and i'm just going to just confirm this uh i'm just going to confirm this yep Woj did tweet this out i it was an espn notification but mitchell robinson he will be um most likely participating against the raptors and if he returns this is a very big boost not just in their defense but also in their offense having that center that can operate the pick and roll with jalen brunson is going to work wonders for the team and Hopefully they can make that work. But with that, those are all the games that ended up happening yesterday. And we're out of time for this sec third segment. So tune in for the fourth segment where I talk a little bit about the Houston Rockets and give a little apology to Jalen Green because I really think that he deserves it after what he's been doing. So I'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 